Trying to prepare for your canning session can be one of the most hardest things. There's so much to do, getting everything set up, having all your food prepared, cooked, sliced, cut. It can be quite daunting. What I'm gonna show you in this video is how to get everything set up, get it all laid out, to take some of that stress off of you. I know when I first started canning, it was so hard. You have so much going through your mind trying to get this right. It can just be too overwhelming where you don't do it, you give up. But it's like anything else. Once you do it enough times, you get better at it and it just kind of comes naturally. I think one of the hardest things for me when I first started canning was, you know, getting it all set up and then getting it all into the jar and, you know, is my stuff hot? Is my stuff cold? And I don't want to break a jar, put them into the canner. So just sit back. We'll go step by step. First on this video, we're going to show you how to get everything set up. And then I am going to finish another video, uh, which I'll put out after this one, that I'm going to be making uh, roast carrots, potatoes, some onions uh, in a jar. Uh, my son loves it. I like to keep it on hand and then he has a meal whenever he wants it. He can go grab a jar and have a meal. You're ready to go. It keeps me from eating out so much and I can just throw meals together so quickly. Just having either A, meals ready to go or uh, having bits and pieces of my meals in a jar where I can throw it all together and have it ready to go. Uh, so if you're new to canning, come join along and I hope you can learn something uh, from all my past failures. <laughs> so let's go have some fun. I'm gonna prepare my seal and get it on the canner. That'll be ready ahead of time. Boom. I'm gonna look through here and make sure I can see daylight. That means it's not clogged. I also grabbed my canning salt while I was downstairs. I about forgot that. Some people use this, some people don't. So. My canner takes three quarts of water. All right, I'm gonna set this on the stove. It'll be ready to go. Next, I'm gonna wash all these babies up. They don't need to be sterilized because they're going in a pressure canner. If you're water bath canning, make sure you sterilize them. 
you can use your uh, dishwasher. That's a real great way, and it keeps them warm when they're done. So I'm gonna get all these washed up, and we'll be back. Here's another little trick that you can do if you forget. How many jars does my canner hold? Or you're like me and you have so many different types of jars that they're not all shaped the same. And sometimes they fit differently. So way you can do that, grab your jars, set them in your canner, So they're not one to stay down. Mine is going to fit nine wide mouths. So there's a little trick if you ever forget. All right, the next thing we're gonna get ready is our lids and our rings. So I have figured out that I am going to need 18 bands and 18 flat lids. I really don't want to use the wide because they're so hard to find and I'm stocked up on regular mouth, but I really like to do roast in a wide mouth jar. Um, another thing to do is think about what you're canning before you pick your jars. I'm doing roast, so therefore it's easier to put roast, potatoes, carrots into a wide mouth jar. I've done it in a regular jar I mean, times are hard. If you need to do that, it's gonna make it a little more difficult just to get it stuffed in there. It's still gonna work fine. Don't sweat the small stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and use some of my precious white mouths that I found in the store the other day. You know, because COVID's made everything so hard to find, even out of canning season, which all year is canning season for me because I love to can and I like to can, I like to can meals. Really. So I'm going to get these washed up so they're clean and sterilized. You do not need to boil them. You don't need to leave them in hot water anymore. Make that step a little easier for yourself. I've done it both ways. They both still worked fine. So I still find myself leaving them in hot water sometimes just because it's a habit. But make it a little easier on yourself. Skip it. Get these washed. Place them in a bowl set them aside so when you're ready to go, they're ready. And then I'm gonna go through my bands and I'm gonna find out which ones are better than others, which ones are rusty, what have you, and get these cleaned up. I'm gonna show you another little trick that I like to do. Keeps your lids from sticking together because when you're ready to can, sometimes they stick together, you're fighting them. So what I like to do is I get them washed up and then I put them backwards. So I'll stack them in the bowl. I'll put these sides together and then, whoops, that one's backwards. And then I'll put these sides together and then I'll just keep doing that. So they're just backwards. So that way they're not sticking together because if you do this, they're just going to stick together and when you have that water on them they like to suction together so i'll stack mine in the bowl just put them opposite and i'm good to go Now I have my bands all ready to go. They'll be hanging up and I'll just be able to grab one as I need one. Okay, so 
we have everything over here ready to go. I got some paper towels so we can wipe the rims. Then I have my canning salt if you choose to use that. For a pint jar, I like to put in a half a teaspoon. So I got that ready to go. And a couple funnels. If you have one, that's fine. Sometimes I like to do two. Um, this is my favorite one. It's the Progressive. It helps keep your rims clean. It also has the measurements on the side already. So you just place it on your jar and uh, it'll let you know your headspace. Real good for beginners. I'll leave a link down below for this. Oh, I forgot my ladle. Uh, so I've got my, my lids, I have my vinegar ready to go, and uh, this is for, to use your paper towel, to wipe your rims, to clean them off before you put your, your lid and your band on. And then the rest of this I'll dump in the canner uh, when I'm done, if I have enough left. If I don't have enough left, then obviously I'll pour some more uh, into the canner. And I need my scoop. All right, finally found it. I hid it for myself. This is uh, progressive as well. This is another ladle that I like. Um, it's bigger than your normal ladles. It's great to use uh, just for your home cooking as well, but it's actually made for a canning ladle. Um, so always have this ready if you need it. Um, to scoop your liquid in or your products. I won't really need it a whole lot on this round, but a lot of the times you're going to need this. We also need a towel. That's just for heat and cold for your jars because uh, your counter could be pretty cool and you're putting some real hot liquid in it. Uh, it's just a habit. You're going to see a lot of canners doing that. Uh, to help protect your jars, especially when they're coming out of the canner uh, and they're super duper hot. You don't want to set them on a really cool surface. Um, just that heat to cold could hurt your jars. And then you lose all that hard work of your product. All right, guys, that's pretty much how I get everything set up for my canning sessions. If you have any questions uh, or any tips for me. Leave it in the comments below and I would love to see your ideas and how you do things differently because it could help somebody else and it could also help me. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video on how to go ahead and finish the rest of the process of jarring and getting your food prepped and be ready to start canning. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe. Please share it with other canning friends. Um, it really helps my channel out. I'm new. Help a girl out, please. Thank you. Y'all have a great and blessed day.